What can the second derivative tell you about a function? Remember the second derivative is the derivative of the derivative. And so if you have some function and, and you know somewhere its second derivative is, is a positive number, it comes out to be a positive value, what is that telling you? Well, since the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative, that's telling you that the first derivative must be increasing. So, so this is telling you that your first derivative is increasing. Because when a derivative is positive, it's saying the function is increasing. And since this is the derivative of the derivative, and it's positive, that means that the function must be increasing. The, the, the derivative function must be increasing. But what does that tell you about the, the original function f? If f prime is increasing, what does f look like? Well, let's think of for a second. If, if, the, if, if f started out maybe with some negative derivative, what would it mean for that to be increasing? Well, for that to increase, it would need to become less negative. So, so maybe it would then move on to be something like this. A little bit less negative, right? It's not, it's not sloping down as much. And if it continued to increase, becoming even less negative, eventually you get something with like zero slope, and then maybe even start to get positive again. It would start, start getting positive. But the general behavior here of the derivative increasing, it just means that your function is going to be bending, bending upward. Your function's gonna look something like this. We say that your function f of x is concave up. By way of contrast, if your second derivative at some point comes out to be a negative value, that means your first derivative is decreasing. Because when a derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. So since the derivative of the derivative is negative, the derivative must be, is, must be decreasing, must be decreasing. But what does that tell you? Well, if you started out with some, with some positive derivative and it was decreasing, it would be becoming less positive and less and less positive until it becomes zero and continue to become smaller until it's negative, more negative, more negative, it would look something like this behavior, which we call concave down. Here my original function is concave, concave down. So, so let's just think of a quick, a quick example. So, so let's try looking at a function, let's consider a function like f of x is equal to x cubed. Now, f prime of x, its first derivative, by the power rule, will just be 3x squared. And so its second derivative will be 6x. Well, well think about 6x. If you pick an x value that, that is smaller than 0, so if this is 0, these are your x values, if you pick an x value smaller than 0, then your second derivative will be, will be a positive number. And so it should be concave, it should be, oh, no, no, if you pick, if you pick an x that's smaller than zero, like negative two or something, then you second derivative, you plug that in, you plug in a negative number, six x will come out to be, will come out to be a negative number. And so your derivative should be bending down. And if you pick a value bigger than zero, like two or three or whatever, and you plug it in, your second derivative comes out to be positive, and so your function should be bending, bending up, should be concave up. Let's go ahead and look, look at the graph of the function and remind ourselves what it looks like. If you graph x cubed, notice it looks like this. Before zero, for all the negative values, do you, do you see how it's happening? It's, it's concave down. But for all the values bigger than zero, it's beginning to bend up. So it's moving from concave down to concave up at zero. Since zero is a place where it changes from concave down to concave up, we call that an inflection point. An inflection point is just a point where you change your concavity. So this is my inflection point. There's one last thing we'll mention about, about these second derivatives. And the thing we'll mention is, is if you're at a maximum, so if, if, if some function has a maximum at say x equals c, 
then let's think. If you had a maximum, you must be sitting at the top of, of some hill, right? But, but that just means that, that at that point, your second derivative must be zero. So if you had a maximum, then your second derivative at C, no, I'm sorry, not zero, your second derivative must be, must be negative. Your second derivative must be negative. The, the function is bending, bending downward in order for you to sit at the top of the mountain. The first derivative may be zero, but your second derivative is negative. Similarly, if your function has some minimum at say some point x equals c, so, so maybe here you had a, a minimum, you, you, again your first derivative could be zero, but your second derivative must be positive, because you're sitting at the bottom of a valley, so your second derivative will be positive. That is if your second derivative exists. Again, you might be in one of these weird situations like, like the absolute value graph or something where your derivative doesn't even exist. But if your derivative exists, then for maximums, your second derivative is negative, and for minimums, your second derivative is positive.